this time on Documentify TV. In 1823, a workman draining a field beneath the ruins of Kegwirli Castle in North Wales struck something buried in the peat. When he brushed away the mud, he found fragments of a black stone-like object wrapped in thin sheets of gold. It looked small, delicate, and completely out of place. Once the pieces were cleaned and fitted back together, the object revealed something even stranger, an oval boat-shaped vessel carved from glossy black shale, decorated with tin and wrapped in gold foil stamped with the perfect concentric circles. It was tiny enough to hold in both hands, but nothing about it belonged to a small local community in the Middle Bronze Age. Because this object, this fragile bowl, shouldn't exist. Not here. Not with these materials. Not with this level of craftsmanship. And when researchers finally studied it closely, they discovered the bowl wasn't a bowl at all. It was a boat. A model of a seagoing vessel capable of crossing open water. So the real question is, why did someone bury it in a bog 3,300 years ago? It's now known as the Kegwirli Bowl. It dates to around 1300 BC, during the Middle Bronze Age. This object re represents a ship. First, the materials. The body is carved from the Kimmeridge Shale, a black oil-rich stone that only comes from the cliffs of Dorset around 220 miles away. Then there's the metalwork. The artisan carved recesses into the hall and filled them with pure tin, an extraordinary choice in an age when tin was strategically valuable. Most British Bronze Age tin came from the far southwest. Over that tin, the marker laid hammered gold foil and the die stamp decorations match the gold working traditions of Bronze Age Ireland. So you have shale from Dorset, tin from the southwest, gold likely from Ireland or Wales, all assembled in North Wales, a single object with a supply chain stretching hundreds of miles. Before we go further, let's test this interpretation. Is this really a boat, or are archaeologists reading too much into it? Some local memory calls the fine spot, Mai's Seabin, the field of the cup, suggesting people once thought it was a drinking vessel. But the symbolism carved into the object tells a different story. The downpointing triangles align exactly where oars would sit. The zigzag lines represent waves. The long rim strips resemble gunwales, and the circular motifs at each end are oculi, protective eyes seen on boats across Bronze Age Europe. These elements aren't decorative, they're structural. Together, they form a complete maritime schema. And the hull shape? It matches a hide-covered skin boat known as Kurok, a type of vessel used for long-distance travel across the Atlantic facade. So while debate exists, the consensus is strong. This is a model of a seagoing boat. And here's where the object becomes even more extraordinary. The stamped gold discs along the hull aren't just ornaments. Their solar symbols direct echoes of the Nebra sky disk and the Trondheim sun chariot. Across Bronze Age Europe, the sun was believed to travel across the sky by chariot during the day and across the underworld by boat at night. This model, built from the black stone, given eyes and placed in a bog, was almost certainly a solar vessel offering a symbolic ship for the sun's journey into the spirit world. Around 1300 BC, the climate in Britain worsened. It became wetter, colder, and harvest declined. 
Communities across Europe shifted from burying treasures with the dead to depositing them into rivers, lakes, and wetlands. The Kegwe Le Bol is part of that shift. It was broken and carefully placed in a waterlogged field, a gift to the deities connected with the sun, sea, and storm. And it wasn't only a masterpiece in the region. Just a few miles away, the Mold Gold Cape was discovered, one of the greatest Bronze Age artifacts in Europe. Together, these finds point to a powerful ritual landscape in northeast Wales, active for centuries. Today, the Kegwerli Bowl sits in a climate-controlled case in Cardiff. Its shale body is so unstable that conservators rebuilt missing sections in tint and resin to keep the gold and tin from collapsing. In 2023, it traveled to Germany to be displayed beside the Niebuhr sky disk, linked Welsh Bronze Age traditions to a broader European cosmology. But many believe it should return to its home landscape in Wrexham, near the field where it was deposited more than 3,000 years ago. Because this object isn't just a bowl, it's a map of a Bronze Age Britain, its trade, its fears, its rituals, and its extraordinary maritime world. A tiny vessel that shouldn't exist, but it does. If you want to explore any real discovery from Europe's deep past, check out my video on the medieval mystery uncovered beneath an old town. It's one of the most surprising finds we've covered. That's it for today's video, folks. See you next time right here on Documentify TV.